So I work at the University of California, San Francisco, and we have a group called the Adolescent and Young Adult Health National Resource Center. And we have been looking at a number of states who have declared that they're going to be working on a national performance measure. That means that they're going to make themselves accountable about increasing the numbers of young people, both men and young women, who have access to health care. So we've been working with states to work with them and their health departments, their social services, because what we recognize is that it's really difficult sometimes to enroll young people in health insurance. But it's not enough to have a passport for gathering access to or entering health care. What we really need to do is being sure that when the adolescent or young adult, whether a male or female, enters the clinic, their interaction with the physician or the nurse practitioner or the physician's associate is a really positive one. And one of the things that we've been trying to work on with states is the issue of time alone with a provider. We find that young people really need time alone, not just because of potentially confidential things that they want to talk with the provider and they don't want their parent sort of uh, like a drone above them, but they really need to develop a safe environment for them to develop some skills. We need to have, give young people an opportunity to learn how to communicate, how to share what's on their minds. And we need good providers to be able to be sensitive listeners. Well, I really am passionate about young people because they represent the future of our, of our country and our world. And I'm an immigrant from Argentina, and I think that having been an outsider, coming to this country without speaking a word of English, having pierced ears at the time that no one had pierced ears, and being bullied as an eight and a nine-year-old, really shaped uh, my sense of, quote-unquote, being an other or being outsider. And I think that my passion about improving the lives of young people is driven by the fact that I hope those young people don't feel the same experiences that I had that shaped my character. I'm the first one to go to college in my family. And so at our university, we have a group that identifies faculty members who were the first ones to go to college. And then students in our School of Medicine or Dentistry or Pharmacy or Nursing are identified as well. And then we try to match each other so that people recognize that they may feel like they're isolated and the first ones in their family, but there is a whole community, there's a safety net for them to see role models who positively expanded their horizons and fulfilled things, their dreams that they had never thought that they would. What really drives my passion though is the importance of data and evidence and knowledge and I am driven by understanding how we translate that knowledge into ways that we can improve policies and programs and services for young people. It takes a very long time to go from one successful model that might begin in one community, and when we attempt to replicate it across the country, it's really challenging. And sometimes I think we need to learn from franchises like McDonald's. Why, why is McDonald's so successful in going to scale? If you want to buy, and this is not a commercial for McDonald's, but if you go to a McDonald's, you know that if you're needing a quarter pounder hamburger, you're gonna get a quarter pounder wherever you go, whether you're in Georgia or whether you are in Hawaii or whether you're in pa Paris, France. But in each of those communities, they have something unique on their menu. So if you go to Georgia in, in the U.S., you'll have two, you'll have grits. Or if you go to Hawaii, you could get two-finger poi. Or if you go to Paris, you might get wine on the menu. So the concept here that I am sharing this analogy is that we need to find out what the essence of successful programs have. What's the evidence? What's the research that tells us what works for whom and under what circumstances? And then to use that evidence to get other communities to learn how to use that information in their own communities while also having the fidelity to what worked, but also some local adaptation to how to use that evidence to work in their own communities.